Hello again, everyone. In this uh, technical analysis of the stock market video, I call it stampeding the herd because that is exactly what it seems like is going on right now. They're stampeding the herd. And for a little bit of perspective, I think you ought to check out uh, on Twitter, Cinema Trader put out a series of charts this morning, 12 charts for a perma bear Christmas. And he starts off here with the most confident dumb money in history index, the most confident index. Check it out. There's a whole series of 12 charts. I think you'll find it very, very interesting. It'll just give you pers some perspective. And of course, that's what's going on in the overall background, right? Well, let's focus on price action. Let's look at the NASDAQ composite. The NASDAQ was down 9.10 on Friday. Let me get rid of the crosshairs for a second. So here's the picture trending up very strongly. Let's take a look at the, uh, the weekly view. Up 377.77 for the week. So the strong strength in the NASDAQ composite. And it doesn't matter whether you look at the NASDAQ composite or whether you look at the NASDAQ 100 index. They look almost identical. Okay, So I focus on the NASDAQ composite because it's the one that gets broadcast on uh, the TV and the news shows, etc., the most. And uh, since they're so similar, that's what I'm focusing on. So let's take a look at the Elliott Wave picture in here. Now, this is a daily view. And right now, I'm counting off this low. Let me get my crosshairs back. We're looking at this low on September 21st. I think that was a fourth intermediate wave. And right now, we're trying to flesh out five minor waves up for the fifth and final intermediate wave. And right now, I think we are in the third wave of that uh, of those five waves, the third minor wave. And I'm looking for five impulsive waves in here. Five waves, I should say, in an impulsive structure. So right now, I think we are very close to or at the high, it may have been on Friday, of the third minute wave, the third little wave within that structure in here. And I say that because look at the divergence that's showing up on the RSI with this last push that happened. So we actually got in the corrections in here, it actually looks almost the opposite of what I'd be looking for. Typically, I look for a sharp correction for wave two, kind of like right here. But that's not what we got within this wave three. It looks like one, sideways two, three, pull back four, and then five. So this is what I'm looking for looking at. And so what I'm looking for is a little pullback for wave, wave four. Uh, and it could be more sideways to be the opposite of this uh, correction. And what's interesting is this is in sync with what I'm looking at when I see the wave structure on the Dow Industrials and on the S&P 500. So this is definitely in sync with that. So that is the picture on the NASDAQ. Okay, now I want to take a look at the semiconductor index because the SOX index has just absolutely been going through the rough. Look at this. But it's interesting that the pattern is very, uh, as you would expect, similar to the NASDAQ. I mean, here's the low. September 21st is the low right back here of this corrective move back down. And then it looks like a wave one, wave two, and again, we're fleshing out wave three. The difference is we didn't punch to a higher high in here as the NASDAQ composite did. Uh, on the semiconductor. So watching to see, you know, what's happening with this is, uh, is it changing into something? Is it chopping sideways? It's a little unclear. But the other thing I wanted to point out is something I came across this last week. Look at this tweet by Alex Morrow. The semiconductors are on the SOX index, which is the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index. It says that right here. And that's what I'm showing you on my chart. The semis are three and a half standard deviations above their 200 week moving average. As we saw in 1999, overextension like this can lead to further overextension. But, and what he's talking about is see how he got way outside the extreme of three standard deviations? Okay, and I can't remember exactly what that number it means. I think it's up around 98, 99%. I'd have to, you know, uh, it's been a while since I looked at my statistics. Uh, but it, let's put it this way. I think it's like 99.5% or something. So it's very, very extreme. And it didn't look where we went. Yeah, I pushed maybe a little bit further higher, but it, that's his point. Yeah, it could still further, further overextend, but then look what happened. And that, look where we are right now. And it's just uh, pretty incredible in terms of the move 
uh, that's happening. So again, I just show this for a little perspective in terms of where we're at. And we're, you know, again, what we're, what are we trying to do with these price charts? We're trying to judge, you know, when is the breakdown occurring? When is it starting to roll over, et cetera? Okay, so that is the picture on the semiconductors. Now, again, back to sentiment and what's happening with, you know, where we talk about stampeding the herd. Let's take a look at uh, my put to call ratios that uh, I keep track of. I'm going to go back to this and I'm going to pull it up right here. Okay, so here's my equity put to call ratios. And this is, this is the daily reading. This comes from the Chicago Board of Options Exchange. Okay, here's the daily reading. So what does this mean? It means 48 puts for every 100 calls. And so when it gets below 50.50, I color it dark red. When it's in the 50s, it's a, a more of a bright red. And it's really interesting in here. It looks like I got my color a little bit off here. These, see these purple colors when it's in the 30s? I have had more readings in the 30s in the last six months than I've had in all my data prior to, the, to, to June of this year, all the way back to 2006. My data only goes back to November 2006. I've only got 14 years worth of data right now in this spreadsheet. And I've just never seen this kind of extreme. And over here, this is the 10-day moving average of the put-to-call ratio. The reason I've got this highlighted here, I have never seen a 10-day put-to-call ratio in the, in the 30s at 0.39. I've never seen it in, in 14 years. Now, again, for a little bit added perspective on that same thing, I came across this tweet by Charlie Bellello. I'm probably not pronouncing his name correctly. He's taking the same thing, the CBOE equity put to call ratio, and he's using a 30-day moving average. And he's saying it has never been lower than what he saw. And he published this on December 16th. Okay, so again, just for the background perspective in terms of what's going on, and the kind of bullish extreme that we're dealing with and where we're at in this, that's the background environment in which you got to be paying attention to uh, the price action. You got to pay attention to risk management in terms of how much you're putting at risk, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, the other thing I wanted to do is just pull up my ETF dashboard and show you something real quick. Okay, here's the ETF dashboard for December 18th. I look at this every weekend with the insider members, and you can see we've been just going back and forth. So 14 of the 16 sectors I've got listed here were up, two down this week. Last week, it was just the opposite, three up, 13 down. The week before that, it was 13 up, three down. Talk about just cycling back and forth. And you can see energy was the worst, home builders were the strongest. But the one thing I want to point out to you, yeah, we scroll down, we look at all this, we look at the emerging markets, uh, commodities, et cetera. I fill this out every, uh, every Friday late afternoon when I create this. So down here in the currency area, I've got this Bitcoin ETF trust because I don't view it as a currency, but I kind of put it in that category. Look what it did this last week. I saw this number came out at 43%. For the week, and I was like, whoa, is that correct? So, because I hadn't been looking at it on a daily basis, and I know Bitcoin's been hitting the news and it's been going right through the roof. Let's take a look at the chart. And here's what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over here to the ETFs. We're going to go down over here. We're going to go to CBTC. Yeah, and, and indeed, here's last Friday's close. And uh, right around $20, where's my data? It is at $20.61 close. And this week we closed at $29.48. So and, uh, it's a heck of a move in here. But what my Elliott Wave analysis is showing is this. Let's start off with a weekly view. Okay, so I am going to blow this out. And this is the Bitcoin ETF GBTC. So here's the weekly chart. So I think we had a big cycle wave right here move that peaked back over here in December 2017. Cycle wave two low that bottomed right in here um, January 31st. I'm talking about the week of because this is a weekly chart. Week of January 31st, uh, 2019. Okay. Since then, I think we're fleshing out 
new waves. We're looking for five waves in the cycle wave three, right? We're looking for cycle wave three to the upside. And so I'm looking at five primary waves up. Right now, I think we've had one, two, and we're in the third wave. Typically, the third wave is the strongest. Look how strong the third wave was over here. And look how th strong the third wave of the third wave was. Well, that's exactly where we're at right now. We are in the third wave of the third wave higher. OK, so a couple things are jumping out at me when I look at this weekly chart. So I've got a, what we call a base channel here when we draw the lines here, one and two. And, and typically, I look for the third wave to break out of that base channel this last week. That's exactly what it just started to do. So I am expecting continuation in this to come up and complete this third intermediate wave here. And for sure, you're going to look for this to come up and take out this cycle wave one high. Where is that? 38.71. Okay, that is cycle one high. So if indeed we are in cycle wave three, yeah, I expect that the strong push will continue and we'll punch above this. And then we'll watch and drill down and take a look at the daily charts and keep track to see how does the, the wave structure unfold for waves three, four, and five of primary wave three. That's the picture on GBTC. It sure looks pretty strong. All right, if you felt like this video was helpful, hit the, uh, the like button. And if you're not a subscriber, uh, hit the little subscriber button. And if you'd like more of that, this kind of information, head on over to joehenches.net. Let me see if I can pull that down there. There's the address. You see it on the chart right here. I put it here as a little uh, book, uh, uh, little mark on the screen, uh, joehenches.net. And uh, check out the website. Check out the membership here. All right, everyone, have a great rest of the weekend, great week, and uh, I'll give you an early Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays.